What if you could reverse time? Would you do it? Let's think about it. Hey, my name's Justin Harrell. I challenge you to challenge yourself to think about less taught biblical topics. So the world was plunged into darkness when man sinned. We've examined most of the ways this present world is corrupt. We've seen how the echoes of the past are still with us today. But can any of this be reversed? And if so, what is the Most High God going to do about it? Well, he has done something about it. And in fact, he currently is doing something about it. Now at this point, if I were to ask you, what did God do to save us from our predicament? The average Christian answer would be Jesus, or that God sent his son to die for our sins. Now while this is correct, it's a very basic understanding. It's one I expect from children or brand new disciples in Christ. But what about seasoned believers? See, we boil down the gospel to make it simple for kids and new disciples. This is fantastic. The problem is that most of us never move on to graduate studies in the gospel. There are multitudes of Christians walking around these days with a baby understanding of God's working in the universe. They are only seeing part of the picture. This can lead to misunderstanding passages in scripture or doctrinal error. It's time to grow up. Did you know that Jesus studied and even learned? Luke 2.52 says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. As Jesus grew, he gained knowledge and wisdom. He was in human flesh after all. It took a lot of hard work, just like it does for us. The first step to understanding the solution God is providing is to understand the problems. Yes, I said problems. There's more than one. See, most Christians only see the problem as man sinning in the garden. That means Jesus comes to die for our sins. Problem solved. But over the course of this supernatural playlist, we saw that there were three major rebellions. And these rebellions didn't involve just man. They also involved the lesser Elohim, the sons of God. Man sinned in the garden and death entered the world. But this also involved a being that was not human, the serpent, that devil of old. The sons of God came down to earth to take human women as wives. All our legends of old started here. Man and Elohim rebelled against the Most High God. And in response, the Most High wiped out the world in a flood. Even after the flood, man tried to gain communion with the gods once again. So the Most High scattered man by dividing their languages and giving them what they were seeking, to be under the rule of the sons of God. So there's a sin problem among men and angels. The universe is under a curse. There are other powers ruling over men. And communication is difficult because we speak many languages. All of these problems must be addressed by God. So when Jesus starts his ministry in the first century, he comes to reverse all of these problems. Death will reverse to become life. Rebellion will reverse to become family. And division will reverse to become unity. Have you ever said or done something that you wish you could take back? We all have said something hurtful in the heat of anger we regretted later. If only we could reverse time. While well, redemption is even better than reversing time, it undoes the effect of sin and rebellion while still moving forward in time. Even though you still may suffer consequences for your sin in this earthly life, ultimately the believer in Christ will be separated from any permanent suffering. When Jesus went to that cross, he took with him all your records of wrongs. Listen to this, Colossians 2, 13 to 15. And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. When you trust in Christ, 
all your sins are nailed to that cross. Jesus paid it all. Not only that, he took away the authority of the lesser Elohim. Remember how they were granted domain over the nations? Well, that authority is being revoked. Jesus has all authority. In Matthew 28, 18, Jesus says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. This came as a shock to the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. Jesus was the unique Son of God, Yahweh in human flesh. Being human made him a little lower than the angels. The other powers thought, now was their chance. Let's get him. Let's kill him. And working in the hearts of the human leaders of Israel, they crucified him. This was a trap that God in his infinite wisdom set for these divine beings. 1 Corinthians 2, 6-8 However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They had no clue. Imagine their horror when Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus was in charge now. Remember me? I'm in charge. I'm in charge now. I'm in charge. <laughs> Ephesians 1, 20 to 23, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. In the final videos of this supernatural playlist, we're going to see more ways God is reversing the curse. More ways the cross affects the church. It's something we're going to continue to think about.